we get in private submitted to his work, what could happen to a city? If we get on board, what if, you know, 30 or 40 people in one location, one church would just say, you know what, I'm sold out. Lord, have your way with me. Not in language, not in lip service. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we had, you know, many times there's no life behind the lips. I'm just saying. And our vocabulary sometimes is stronger than our vocation. So we talk it, talk it. We don't walk it, walk it. <laughs> <laughs> but Jesus, all of these things, let's look what Jesus said concerning the Holy Spirit. Because he took three chapters. I admonished this house a long time ago. Am I right? And I said, look, guys, just, you want to talk about the Holy Spirit? Just go over there and look at it over there. Just dine out. Just hang out over those three chapters. Let the Spirit of God speak to you. John 40, John 50, John 60. And even John 17. They were in the Garden of Gethsemane. His exodus, Jesus' exodus, was impending. He was getting ready to lead the guys. Right? He already said within chapter 14, the world cannot see me. But you shall see me. And he said a little while. I have no clue how I've been a little while since I was here. I mean, come on. If I call a prophet and say, I'll be home in a little while, it'll be 2,000 years. <laughs> That's intellectual dishonesty. To interpret it as such. A little while is a little while. In Hebrew, Greek, Arabic, in any language possible. I'm just saying. It takes a religious person to do it. Because I'm telling you, religion, what it always does, it always posts own thing for another time and another people. It's not your time and it's not your turn. <laughs> the devil is alive. It's my time and it's my turn. It's my season. Remember, Diane Walker brought it out to us, let us know it's my season. What was that song? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember because I. Diane Palmer, she prophesied about a She had a song out. It's a new season. It's a new day. Yeah. Somebody got it back then. That's what I'm talking about. Sing on. Sing on. But look, you do. I need to listen to her. She transitioned. So I was listening to her on YouTube. I always do. I'm a throwback type of guy. So I like to go back and listen to stuff. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know. It, it, it does something to you. You bring back mem memories to the where you were at that time. Yeah. And uh, God was doing some great things at AFC. Yeah. 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 And he wants to do some great things here too. Amen. 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 John 14. Thank you. Thank you. John 14. You can't read all of these chapters, but I just pulled out some that could be really applicable for us to kind of situate this message. Yeah. Uh, John 14 and 16. It says something. It says, I will pray the Father, this is Jesus talking, and he will give you what? Another comforter, that he may be with you sometime. Forever. Oh, okay. Oh, he should be with you in the church service. Forever. Oh, okay. Okay, right, right. That he may abide with you forever. And forever in Greek and Hebrew is forever. <laughs> Even the spirit of truth, that's who he is. Right? Yeah. This comforter, another comforter, which means the reason why he said another because it was the same expression of who he was. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at that etymology of the word comforter up in a minute. Mm -hmm. It said that he that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, uh -huh. whom the world cannot receive. Uh -huh. Tell you, David, the world can't receive it. The world can't receive it. Yeah. We're in it, but we're not of it. Yeah. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. So the world can't receive it. The cosmos, the order, the arrangement of things. The, the structure, you know, you know, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. They cannot perceive it. Yes, and it says, uh, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, uh -huh. but you know him. Uh -huh. For he dwelleth in you, and you and shall be in you. Yes, sir. Another word for world too is a religious system. Yes, 
So he was talking about the religious system of his day. If I'm going to put it in the correct his, uh, grammatical context, is he was telling them, he said, it's going to be some religious people who have opportunity to experience this, but they won't. All right? Just like today. Right? So it said, uh, for neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth where? With you, and shall be what? In you. In you. Oh, he's going to abide in you. And many folks looking for an opportunity for the, you know, the next life and looking for streets of gold, which is only for uh, <laughs> and the mansions and all that. We did a little knockoff teaching on the mansion. We're going to do a more thorough teaching on what the mansion is all about. And But we found out when we looked it up in the Strongs, it had nothing to do with an external evidence. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that the dwelling place, and it says it's a metaphor for the believer. Even the strong says. So we're the man. We're the father's house. He abides in us. Just think of it though. If the kingdom doesn't come with observation and the kingdom is within you and then you have the Holy Spirit that's in you. How much more of heaven do you need? Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, God. That's why he said the hour is coming and now is. Am I, I'm not, let me tell you something. There's a place called heaven. There's a dimension called heaven. Not a location. It's a dimension. This physical earth can't contain heaven. You know what I'm saying? But that's why God sent his Holy Spirit in us. We receive the earnest of the Spirit as God putting a down payment on us to let us know, stop worrying about heaven. I got you. We're going there. But you can start now. <laughs> you don't have to die to get there. He died for you. To get it in you. So start living. <laughs> See, when you live in that dimension, people, you know, you know about holiness? Come on, man. It's a whole other level of holiness. When you know you got his spirit in you. You got the kingdom in you. What else can you do? Or not do? Who need to touch not taste that hell? Not. I don't need no rules. I got a relationship that you keep. There's not a rule you can keep. Let's be honest. We try to keep all the rules. Come on. We still struggle trying to keep the rules. It's a relationship that keeps us. He said, No man can pluck you out of my hand. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And they follow me. That's why he told the religious leaders that you search the scripture. And they testify of me. But you won't come to me that you may have life. I can say a whole bunch of stuff. But uh, I'm not going to because I don't want you guys to look at me crazy. Uh, let's go to 15. John 15 is 26. But when, when it's all biblical because I can go through the scriptures of what I just said. It's all in our Bible. Uh, John 15, 26. But when the Spirit, but when the Comforter is come, right, whom I will send unto you from what? The Father. Even the Spirit of truth. You got to keep that underlined somewhere. Uh -huh. Verse 17, it says, true, spirit of truth. And uh, verse 26 of chapter 15, which proceeds from the Father. What are you going to do? He's going to testify of me. So he's going to testify of me. So the Spirit of God has been sent in the earth at Pentecost. Is He has a testimony. And his testimony is concerning the finished work. Right? Oh. 
Verse 16. I, I'm going to move down with this. Uh, I got five minutes anyway. Uh, chapter 16, verse 12. I had to needle nose all this to make it make sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, instead of us reading the whole chapter, I get up here and I need some water and all this other stuff. I'm eating like a deer at the water brook. You know, I'm just saying. It said, verse 16. I mean, verse 12 in chapter 16. He said, I have, listen, listen, this is what Jesus said, right? This is in red. It's black in mine because I put it in black. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you can't hear them. Not the translation. But I'm going to leave you in that infirmity. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into some truth. Oh. oh. All truth, right? Yes. All truth. All is all, right? Yes. All truth. For he should not speak of what? Himself. Remember now, he's going to testify of him. He ain't going to speak of himself. Well, whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall what? He should what? Speak. And he will show you things to come. Now, let's be true to the text. I know we are charismatic, Pentecostal, prophetic people, and we use that. But he's talking to them, mm -hmm. disciples in the garden. Uh -huh. He said, when the Spirit has come uh -huh. at Pentecost, uh -huh. right, he shall speak, and he's going to show you things to come. Yeah. Well, first of all, whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. He was encouraging them, because there's going to be some dark days ahead. Mm -hmm. yeah. He said, but I'm going to give you another confidence who's the Spirit of truth. He's going to speak to you and let you know what's to come. Yes, Lord. So when the persecution comes, I'm giving you leverage in the original context, right? I'm just being through the context. But we could use it today, right? If we tune in on the right frequency, we can hear what the Spirit is declaring. 